No king rules forever, my son. No. What do you mean you're not my son? Well then, who's your daddy? And we know Blood Decay is just breathing on the necks of Prot Warriors, just waiting, just staying patient to be back on top in the meta. Or maybe you don't want to wait for that to happen. So let's start right now with talents, gear, rotation, and everything that you need for Blood Decays in Raids and Mythic Plus. Starting off with the talents. There are only a few talents that change during raids and dungeons, but mostly they aim at either dealing with single target encounters or AoE, so regardless of the content you do, pick your talents accordingly. On the first row we take Blood Drinker for single target. This talent can be used as you pull the boss or simply to have some sustain. It is a channeled spell, but you can still cast defensive abilities and move and dodge and parry and yeah. This one is good and not as awkward as it looks on paper. For AoE scenarios and mostly dungeons, take Heartbreaker. This talent is mandatory in Mythic Plus and can work in certain raid encounters where you have a lot of adds to tank. While inside Death and Decay, Heartbreaker hits 3 more targets and the extra runic power generation will be very necessary to ensure you can survive the incoming damage. Second row, Hemostasis is good all year round. Depending on when you last played Blood Decay, you'll notice that Blood Boil no longer consumes runes. As such, spamming it on cooldown is free AoE threat. With the extra effect of this talent baked in, we get a much needed boost to Death Strike. Third row is Oshiri as the viable choice. I know I've pronounced that wrong, but screw it! This talent has a few functions. It reduces the cost of Death Strike by 5 runic power if you have above 5 stacks of Bone Shield, which actually matters a lot in very intense AoE fights, and it increases the total amount of runic power you can stock. This is also important because Death Strike is a very crucial skill to use for your survival, and having the freedom to delay it and make it more effective can make or break an encounter you are tanking. Fourth row is Will of the Necropolis, giving you 30% more damage reduction once you are below 30% HP. Death Knights are tanks with very, very, very large health pools, and when you are below 30% HP, you actually still have a lot left over. Well, over 100k in most cases, making the last bit of HP harder to damage, in turn giving you time to death strike your way back to a decent amount of health. Think of this talent as a passive shield wall every time you get low with no cooldown. Fifth tier is the Fabled Utility tier, which brings you two options. For raiding, Wraithwalk is pretty much invaluable. Have you heard of the very exclusive Wheelchair Club? The club accepts only handsome members who cannot get from point A to point B in a reasonable manner. As for dungeons, Grip of the Dead is the pro choice. Although you are still slow as balls, the major kite potential you have with this talent gives Death Knights one of the main reasons to be invited for Mythic Plus runs. Sixth row is Bloodworms, or how I like to call it, my everyday nightmare. Previously, this talent was a joke, but it got major buffs in BFA where the amount of sustain it provides scales with your HP, as most blood decay things do. The mechanic is similar to Will of the Necropolis, where you get saved once you dip too low. I know your healers will have anxiety issues the first time around, but once they know that you get tougher to kill at lower HP, every little thing is gonna be alright. Last row, for the majority of cases, take Bone Storm. This bad boy deals AoE damage and heals you for quite a lot for its duration. I am suggesting this as a default and definitely mandatory for Mythic Plus. However, the other two options are also viable, but a little more niche. Purgatory is your cheat death mechanic and works well in progress rating or similar encounters where you tackle a difficulty for the first time. Red Thirst used to be the best one for rating, but as people get more gear, they can afford putting more effort into their DPS output, which Bonestorm provides. Tanks will gear differently than other specs because, and this goes well for self-sustaining tanks like Death Knights and Demon Hunters, damage is almost as important as mitigation. 
The general stat priority you want to follow, again, general, not set in stone, is strength first and foremost, meaning item level. Follow this up with versatility. Death Knights scale really well with versatility because it adds to their damage output and more so to their healing done. When you play Blood, aside from parry, which has RNG attached to it, you will shave up a portion of the damage you take while the rest is taken out of your HP. You will not mitigate as much as Warriors or Paladin, but after you take your damage, you can heal a very, very large portion of it. Versatility complements all of those things. Next up on our list is Haste, to most people's and my surprise as well. Haste helps with rune generation, attack speed and as a result, runic power generation. It does also reduce the cooldown of blood boil, but that will never be enough to put it on top. Haste also synergizes well with Bone Shield, since Bone Shield gives you a 10% boost to your overall haste levels. After haste, we have Critical Strike, that of course gives us damage, but also increases parry chance, and it does so at a very good rate. But again, not enough to propel it past versatility. Lastly, Mastery at the bottom. The shield it provides from our Mastery is nice, but it's a very, very, very shitty ignore pain, which is why we won't focus on Mastery, but that doesn't mean it's a bad stat. It gives us attack power, and over the course of a fight, those shields will stack up in value. Trinkets, as with stats as well, can serve one of two main functions, damage or tankiness. Stat proc trinkets do both, of course, but generally are more geared towards defensive powers than anything else. If you are gearing up, you might want to look towards tanky trinkets as opposed to damage ones. The tanky options you can go for depend on your RNG and how your stats are, but generally you want the Diamond Lace Refracting Prism and Rizan's Gleaming Eye. Since versatility and haste are so good for us, it won't be a surprise that these two are taking the cake. The Diamond drops from Opulence, while Rizan's can be found in Atal Bazaar. And if you're geared to the teeth and mainly doing raid content, Gronk's Primal Rage and Everchill Anchor seem to be performing very well, both drops from Battle for the Zara lore. Moving on to the traits. Blood Knights are more flexible than most tanks. You would think this is a good thing, but really, the traits themselves are not that impactful as they are for, say, Prot Warrior. Once again, similar to Trinkets, there are stack giving traits which work towards improving your survivability and simple damaging dealing traits. I will be listing a few of the best, but you can play around with most of them and see which ones you like. Bloody Rune Blade is one I actually like that gives you a bunch of haste once your Death and Decay proc has, well, procced. This one can be stacked for the extra haste buffs if you feel you need it. Another one you can stack and my personal favorite is Eternal Rune Weapon, where Dancing Rune Weapon gives you a big boost of strength and can have its duration increased by spending runes. This one can alter your rotation a bit where you pull runes just before popping the cooldown for maximum efficiency. One trait you want one of is Bones of the Damned. The armor it gives is good and can stack, but the chance to add an extra bone shield can save you runes and GCDs in the long run since you will end up casting fewer marrow rends and more heart strikes. The other slots can be filled with damage dealing traits as you see fit. But the ones that stand out the most are Rizan's Fury and Deep Cuts. Again, people usually take more damage in raids once they outgear the content, but if you are pushing high mythic keys, you might want to steer more towards the defensive, stat giving as right traits. And for secondaries, as you would suspect, Overwhelming Power is the go to for single target damage, with Heed My Call the one you opt for AoE, and these two will most likely never compete with each other. As a defensive trait, Resounding Protection is a good one for all situations. The main concept with Blood Death Knights is optimizing around Death Strike and making sure you get the best Death Strikes out possible. That means that you want to use Death Strike immediately after taking a large hit. To be able to do that, you need to have Runic Power available and at least 5 Bone Shields to reduce its cost. As such, the most important thing to keep up is Bone Shields with Marrow Rend. Then you use Death Strike to 1. Prevent you from capping Runic Power and 2. To mitigate a big blow you just took. After that, use the Death and Decay procs as they become available, if you have the Bloody Runeblade talent. If not, just ignore this one. 
Next up is Blood Drinker, if you have it talented and you don't have Dancing Rune Weapon buff since it would waste its effect. Don't cap on Blood Boil stacks and also remember Blood Boil buffs your death strikes. After that, further down the priority list, Marrand is used to keep you at high stacks, so use it when you dip to 6 or fewer bone shields. After this, it's just a matter of optimizing your resources. You want to always make sure you can cast an emergency Marrand and Death Strike. Use runes on Death and Decay when fighting three or more targets, and use runes for hot strikes to keep aggro and generate runic power. If you have Dancing Rune Weapon up, Use Blood Boil since it applies Blood Plague twice to each enemy, consume the Death and Decay procs and if you still don't have anything to do, fill in with more Blood Boils. Before moving on, let's quickly talk about our cooldowns. Dancing Rune Weapon is both an offensive and a defensive cooldown. It increases parry chance by 40% and replicates melee abilities, as well as making Blood Boil apply the Blood Plague twice. You will generate more stacks of bone shields and general resources giving you more options to spend them on important abilities during this cooldown. Anti-Magic Shell is the on-demand magic damage absorption shield, pretty straightforward to use. Vampiric Blood boosts your HP and the amount of healing you receive. You can pop it when you need a lot of healing either from your death strikes or from your healer. Icebound Fortitude is our 30% damage reduction cooldown for all-purpose use. When using consumables, remember our talk about the stats. Going for Pack the Versatility Enchants for Rings and Versatile Royal Quartz for Gems will be ideal. The weapon is going to be your very own Rune of the Fallen Crusader. Rejoice on your amazing enchant and drink the tears of the poor saps who pay thousands of gold to keep their weapons enchanted. For food, feasts will do the best. And depending on your finances, you can opt for the Blood Sausages instead. But if money is an issue, spiced snappers are always a good replacement. Lastly for potions, Flask of the Undertow and Battle Potion of Strength will always be your best options because strength and damage, they're awesome. If you like tanking and want to expand on your options, check our Warrior and Paladin guides. They're really quick and they'll put you up to date with everything that you need for dungeons and raids. As always, we love and appreciate our patrons for their involvement in our team. And if you also want to become a Patreon, check the link down below. If you like Warcraft lore and nerdy things, check our Amazon affiliate link. Buying with that link on Amazon helps your local nerds in achieving their dream of becoming professional nerds. Thanks for watching the video and being cool, and I'll see you next time.